I have a friend who um, he's different than I am in that he knows every date I think that's ever happened in his life. He can tell you when my birthday is. He can tell you when he and his friends did certain things. He knows the significance of dates. This week, as we're headed toward Easter, while Scripture doesn't tell us that there's a special observance of the resurrection, we do that, it seems, every Sunday um, at the church at the well when we take communion. But as someone who likes to know when things are, it is amazing to think about that we are as close as we can get in terms of calendar to the anniversary of the death of Jesus, um, which is the anniversary also of uh, God leading his people out of Egypt. That's an amazing thing to think about. So this week as we do devotionals, I'm going to be working through what happens during the last week of Jesus' life. And today, um, on Monday, uh, we have Jesus clearing the temple. I want to read that to you, and then I, I want to share a couple thoughts. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers? Now, most of the time when we hear this or we think about this, I always thought Jesus talking about how they were um, buying and selling in the temple, which may have been an offense, but one of the things that, that I never really noticed was when he says, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you've made it a den of robbers. He's actually quoting scripture. When he talks there about it being a den of thieves, he's quoting from Jeremiah 7. Now in Jeremiah 7, what you have, where you have a group of people, Israel, Jewish leaders, who would go to the temple. They would live any way they wanted to. They would do all kinds of immoral things. They would go to the temple and say, hey, we're in the temple. It's safe now. God will take care of us. And he says, no, no. You've made the temple a protective place for people who do immoral things and do not want to follow God. And so when we read this, one of the questions for me to think about as Jesus is not just simply talking about the temple, he's talking about the way that you live your life outside of where the temple would be. Um, he takes the temple out of the equation and says, what's your heart like? What do, you, what do you do? And so for me, the question that I think about when I read that is, how does my life look when I'm not with God's people? How do I live? Do, do I live in such a way that I have integrity and that I have a moral life and that I do the things that God wants me to do no matter where I am? I can't just live however I want to and then show up saying, well, God doesn't care. I'm here, wherever here is. He's going to be okay with things. But rather, the call here is for integrity in my life to live in a moral way that shows the glory of God. So the question I want to leave you with today is looking at your life. How do you show God's call for moral living in your life? It would be a shame for us to be... A group of people, God's people, where people could look and say, well, they're really just a den of thieves. Let's make sure that our lives reflect the holiness of God and that we don't rely on some sort of place or worship service or particular right to somehow make us okay. Our life needs to look like Jesus's. I hope you have a good week. I'll see you tomorrow.